Hey all, we're going to cover two-dimensional arrays. If you don't like the pace of the video, adjust the playback speed in YouTube. Check the timestamps to jump to specific topics. In this lesson, we'll learn about 2D arrays in Java. Let's start by declaring a variable A. Notice two sets of square brackets after the data type, which indicate A will point at a 2D array of int. Next, let's initialize the variable with a new array object. The two numbers tell Java the dimensions of the array. Being an array of int, the elements will default to zero. Here's the visualization we typically use for tracing. The first number indicates the array will have three rows, while the second number indicates it will have four columns. This visualization is very useful for tracing, but it isn't the most accurate representation of the data structure. Let's take a look at alternative visualizations that'll help us better understand how Java stores a 2D array in memory. The first number, in this case three, creates a one-dimensional array of size three. The second number, in this case four, creates a one-dimensional array of size four inside each of the indexes of the first array. A two-dimensional array can be described as an array of arrays. If we wanted, we could carry this process deeper and create three, four, or five-dimensional arrays. Now let's look at another way to create a two-dimensional array. Here, we hard-code specific values into the array. Again, let's look at an alternative visualization. The outer one-dimensional array contains two objects for its two indexes. Each of these objects is a one-dimensional array of size three. Since we primarily use the first visualization, I prefer to code each of the inner arrays on its own line. It's easy to look at the code and see the top line corresponding to row zero and the next line corresponding to row one. Now that we've created a couple of two-dimensional arrays, let's access them. This line of code will print out the contents of the B array at row zero, column one, and output the int four. This line of code will assign the value nine to the A array at row one, column two. This code will print the evaluation of the Boolean expression. Array A at row two, column zero is zero. Array B at row one, column one is four. The expression zero is less than four evaluates to true. In this Java tutorial, we're going to learn how to traverse a two-dimensional array. We declare a two-dimensional array of type int. The name of the variable is ARR, and we've hard-coded the values. Now let's look at some code for traversing the array. The outer for loop traverses each of the rows in the 2D array, and the inner for loop traverses each column in a given row. In Java, 2D arrays are row major. The first number specifies the row, and the second number specifies the column. Now we'll trace the code. We set r to zero. We'll continue the outer loop as long as r is less than arr.length. When we take the length of a 2D array, we are counting the number of elements in the outer array. Using the traditional visualization, we are counting the number of rows. For our current array, we can think of this expression as r is less than two. r is zero, so this evaluates to true. Now we set c to zero. We check if c is less than arr index r dot length. Let's talk about what this means. arr points to the outer 1D array like it did two lines up. arr index r means we are pointing at the element at index r. In this case, r is zero, so we are pointing at an inner array at index zero of the outer array. We take the length of the inner array, which is three. If we want to use the traditional visualization, we could say we are taking the length of row zero of the 2D array. For our current array, we can think of this expression as c is less than three. c is zero, so it evaluates to true. We output arr row zero, column zero, which contains two. Increment c to one. c is less than three, so we continue. We output arr row zero, column one, which contains three. Increment c to two. C is less than three, so we continue. We output ARR row zero column two, which contains one, increment C to three. C is not less than three, so we terminate the inner loop. We output a new line, increment R to one. R is less than two, so we continue. Set C to zero. Now that R is one, we are checking the length of row one. C is less than three, so we continue. We output ARR row one column zero, which contains eight, increment C to one. C is less than three, so we continue. We output ARR row zero column one, which contains five, increment C to two. C is less than three, so we continue. 
we output ARR row 1 column 2, which contains 6, increment C to 3. C is not less than 3, so we terminate the inner loop. We output a new line, increment R to 2. R is not less than 2, so we terminate the outer loop, and the program finishes. When using for loops, we also have the option to modify the values in the loop. This modification causes the code to double the value of each element in the array. We can also modify the increment. In this case, R advances by 2 instead of 1. Now let's look at another array. We'll traverse this array using for each loops. For each loops are easier to write, but they must traverse every element in an array. Also, while you can modify the values in the temporary variable, doing so won't change the values in the array. Looking at the outer loop, we see the name of the array following a colon. This lets Java know which array to traverse. Before the colon, we see a temporary variable named row. This variable must be able to hold the elements contained in the outer array. The elements in the outer array are 1D arrays of int, so we declared row as an array of int. For the inner loop, we are traversing each of the inner 1D arrays of int. Our temp variable is an int, so it can hold the int values. Let's trace the code. First, we create the row variable and have it point at the element in index 0. Currently, row is pointing at the 1D array at index 0. We could also say that row is pointing at row 0 in the 2D array. In the inner loop, we create an int variable value and initialize it with a copy of the element at index 0 in row 0. We output value, which is 4. For our second time through the inner loop, value is set to a copy of the element at index 1 in row 0. We output value, which is 2. We've traversed the entirety of row 0, so we terminate the inner loop. We output a new line. Next, the row variable changes to point at the 1D array at index 1. We could also say that row is pointing at row 1 in the 2D array. In the inner loop, we create an int variable value and initialize it with a copy of the element at index 0 in row 1. We output value, which is 6. For the second time through the inner loop, value is set to a copy of the element at index 1 in row 1. We output value, which is 3. We've traversed the entirety of row 1, so we terminate the inner loop. We output a new line. We've traversed all the rows in the array, so we terminate the outer loop and the program ends. You've reached the end, and if you have a test coming up, good luck. Tell me in the comments, was the pace of this video too fast, too slow, or about right? Check out the other resources in the video description and on the channel, and I'll see you soon.